So I'm here with Peter Mach. My name is Felix Koscher. I'm the vice chairman of the German Libertarian Party. And uh, Peter is the chairman of the um, Czech Libertarian Party, who has been successful in getting a seat in the parliament. And yeah, so let me first ask you, Peter, um, Kate, could you tell us a little bit about the situation in the Czech Republic right now, the political um, situation and your opinion about the past, present and future, just uh, in a short general way for people in Germany to understand what's going on in Czech Republic right now, in your opinion? Well, I, I think that the situation in the Czech Republic uh, is quite similar to the situation in other countries in Europe and maybe to some extent also in the United States. People uh, don't believe in politics anymore, they don't trust politicians, they don't believe that they can they can uh, change uh, uh, what's happening around them and uh, we we established the Free Citizens Party, a libertarian party in the Czech Republic uh, five years ago or almost six years ago in 2009 just because uh, we saw that uh, there was no political party uh, for which we could vote. There was no party that uh, advocated libertarian ideas, the ideas of individual freedom. And therefore uh, we have established the Free Citizens Party. Uh, we run in the election. Our ideas are purely libertarian. They are based on the ideas of Friedrich Hayek, Milton Friedman, uh, Adam Smith and other great thinkers. Um, we have been successful to that extent that uh, we won this, this seat in the European Parliament, but uh, till now we have not managed to get into the Czech Parliament. It's very difficult, uh, you know that it's difficult for uh, any for political parties that uh, are not part of the establishment, it's difficult to get into the media. Uh, so we can say that it's a little miracle that we won this seat in the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a, a very wonderful miracle indeed. Congratulations on, on this seat again. So, and could you tell us uh, how is your story with libertarianism? I think uh, Czech Republic has a Uh, free spirit somehow in the culture and did how did you come in touch with the ideas of liberty and libertarianism property rights it's it's so unknown in in our culture today still so how did you get there personally have you been raised in a liberal way or you discovered it also in true books or what's your story with libertarianism well in fact I uh, spent 14 years of my life um, in a communist country where uh, everything was run and managed by uh, bureaucrats or, or politicians. There was almost no private property. People could not run their own businesses. And even as a child, I could see that this system is bad that it simply lacks freedom and therefore uh, I took part in the protests against the communist rulers in 1989 as a 14-year-old boy and I started to be interested in politics. Uh, then I uh, welcomed reforms like privatization, liberalization of uh, prices uh, and cutting taxes and government expenditures. Uh, but when this uh, was 
taking place, I believe that it was not sufficient. I started to read books by Milton Friedman, the book Free to Choose. I started to read Frederick Bastiat's mm. uh, yeah, The good. Law and the Petition of Candlestick Makers and other books. And I simply uh, got the creed that an individual must be free and therefore I uh, have been advocating for all my life the principles of individual freedom and I believe that the taxes should be as low as possible that the government should not distribute any subsidies and so on. Yeah, we would basically like to make taxes a voluntary. That would be our approach to, uh, to not have an anarcho-capitalistic society, but have a state in a that is defined by the monopoly of force in a certain region. But uh, um, the taxes would be voluntary. The people living in the area would not be forced to pay. That's that's like you know mind games, like approaches for how what we could do once we would be able to try things like this, but it's an interesting question of course, how much liberty um, really is possible. So maybe we just make a difficult question for you, because <laughs> you are already in our, in our field of knowledge, so I can maybe ask you something that is on my mind recently. Um, it's a about a principal question with the non-aggression principle we of course um, reject the use of force, the initiation of the use of force but what's your take on the hate speech or for example if people encourage others to use violence that's like a moral conflict so would the initiation of the use of force be legitimated to, to stop um, people who spread ideas of violence? You, you see the conflict there? In well, the I think that mm, physical violence should be used only to those who make physical aggression. So if someone just speaks of aggression, if someone uh, just have word abuse against someone we should not uh, punish him physically yes uh, therefore I am advocating free speech which uh, includes also uh, the right to say even bad things which does not mean that people should uh, say bad things and they should bear the responsibility for saying bad things but I think that the government the state should not punish speeches yeah. whatever bad they are Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, the basically the clear, simple principle. That's that's clear. But uh, for me, still, it's sometimes c questionable when it comes to really people preparing for the use of violence, or if there's a, a radical group that is ready to use violence, and uh, maybe it could be difficult. But uh, fortunately, we are don't have to, to make these important decisions because we are not in power. So I, I, I wouldn't know if I would want to be in power, actually, to take responsibility for this whole mess. It's also a, a question of me. It, it, we are in a very comfortable position to be able to criticize this from the outside, I think, and understanding the problems, but not having to actually deal with them because they don't let us <laughs> do it. Okay, so how is uh, the situation of political prisoners in Czech Republic today? Um, do you have like um, agencies that lock people up for having an for their opinions or you have a le good legal system? What do you think about the current situation? Uh, 
I don't think that in the Czech Republic we have political prisoners. Uh, I think that no one is imprisoned for his political opinions in the Czech Republic. No, oh, okay, that's good because in Germany we have people being locked up for this kind of things. What happened to me when I discovered libertarianism it was like a missing piece in my uh, political ideology and I really started to see how simple things could be if you apply apply the right principles. Yeah, so we we've been uh, to a trip recently to Ukraine and Poland and we've been talking with uh, the liberal forces in, in this area and we've been inspired uh, especially by um, the founder of the Ukrainian Libertarian Party and um, they have a very the, the party is called 5.10 have you heard of them? No. they are they, ju they founded about the same time we did just last year in the summer and uh, what he is promising to the people in the Ukraine is that in the, with his politics everybody will be ten times as rich so this is for us we have this strategy of provocation for our party um, that we learned from the UKIP and uh, Polish guys but now this idea I like also a lot to make it clear to people that in a libertarian society they will all be much richer in the end of the interview, the, the guy said, um, Gennady Balashov is his name, he said, people want money. And, and I think it's true. So this is part of our strategy. Uh, one part is to polarize and to get attention by doing stupid provocation things, you know, just to get the attention. And then once we have a chance to express some rational arguments, we want to help people to understand that they would be much more wealthy in our society, we would cut taxes so far away and do, together with deregulation, free market um, politics I think even in Germany <coughs> people could have realistically three or four times as much money as they do now so what is this is our strategy for reaching people in Germany by first getting the attention and then placing this idea in their head that it's in their own interest to have more freedom to use their money and things like this. So what's, what's your idea about um, getting attention or basically we have to make our ideas more known, I guess. Do you have a strategy for... Well, check fringe parties like ours uh, have difficulties to get into the media and therefore naturally they must provoke they must organize demonstrations, happenings, and, s and so on. That's something that the establishment parties don't need to do. Uh, so I think it's simply necessary to do this. Of course that there are also drawbacks of this strategy that the general public can uh, consider you as a fringe party forever and we have really serious ideas that the individual individual uh, should be free that we should use our own money that we make these ideas are serious and therefore we must not be seen by the public as just uh, a funny party so we must also show our serious uh, face. Yeah, exactly. We t we try to play with this, I guess. We are not, we don't get any media attention yet, but I think uh, it's uh, good to have also this uh, funny part in it, you know, so, so people are also not so sure if we are making fun or not. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's uh, good to, to, to play with if we can play with this, this this part of our plan to g first get more known and then show our serious face afterwards because um, when you're provoking you get a lot of attention and then you can you can justify your action in a very rational way and, and this is in my opinion 
our ideas are really uh, morally and intellectually superior. It maybe sounds arrogant, but it is my honest opinion that the libertarian approach is far superior to any other political approach and it can be even scientifically proven that um, more freedom leads to more wealth and more happiness. And, and that's in the end what it's about. This is what we try to to get in the heads of the people to b by making videos like this, to talk with people we m want to meet with all um, political forces, no matter who. Everybody who wants to talk to us, we, we want to go to all, all different um, groups and see what they have to say and talk to them face to face. Yeah. I think that we are, you and we, uh, are different from all other parties. Because all other parties, regardless their names and colors, they simply believe that they should make decisions in place of us. Exactly. Uh, that's what Hayek called the fatal uh, conceit. Uh, their simply belief that they are somehow better than us, that they can know better <coughs> than us what's good for us. Yeah, According exactly. to us, it's fatal conceit and it's fatal because it leads to economic stagnation, it leads to huge debts, um, it, it leads to various economic and social problems. That's why it's fatal. And what we want is just that the other people don't take this right to make decisions uh, in place of us. We are uh, smart enough to make decisions for ourselves. Exactly. We don't want to be forced to participate. That's also the good thing about the libertarian society that all communists or whatever they are, they can <coughs> live, they can exist in this world and as long as they don't force anybody to participate in their group, they are free to do whatever they want. So uh, I think it's just misconceptions that are between us and success. I think most people they get something wrong, you know, they they don't know about it, they're not interested exactly and they have a lot of uh, prejudices. And we have to somehow break through this, I think. And and yeah. What do you think? You you said it was very lucky that you got the seat, but something you seem to have made right. You uh, are far more successful than any other of <laughs> there are not many libertarians in politics also, but why do you think this success happened? Was it just luck or I guess it was some effort behind this? Could you explain how you think? I think that first of all you must strongly believe in your ideas and you must be consistent and you must be patient. So uh, we established our party from nothing. Many people thought that if I established a political party I probably had somewhere some secret money to fund it. I told everybody, no, now we have established the party, we can collect some uh, member fees so that we can put some money together to campaign. So we did it and we gathered uh, people who share these ideas. Of course that there are small differences in opinions uh, which exist in every political party probably, but we have been consistent, we have been insisting on our basic principles and because we have been patient we succeeded, at least partly. Mm. So you've been there from the beginning and I guess also your group is growing, like libertarianism. I think Students for Liberty was founded in 2008 and it's just going through the roof, basically, though it's still so small. I think this is really 
<coughs> what gives me a lot of hope to see it all grow so fast, especially among young people. Okay, so is this the same in Czech? Do you think the young people, they are especially more open to this uh, extreme radical liberal ideas than the older people maybe? I think that people mostly tend to be conservative and therefore people who are in their 50s or 60s don't change their political views usually. So for us it's easier to attract young people who had not been voting for anyone before. Uh, so I think it's quite natural. Also, uh, our the functioning of our party is based on the internet and the internet is used mostly by younger people than by the old people. Uh, so uh, I think that our ideas and our party are attractive especially to young people but also we have people over s over 60 year old okay great so one more question I would have personally this is a really important one so you have um, five years advance um, five years more experience than us we just found it so far we have a good team that is enhancing each other and it's a small group so it currently it's working pretty well uh, uh, the way we do things but uh, we expect difficulties of course as the thing grows and and what what can you give us as a tip what's your experience from this five years are you already said um, to believe in your ideas and I think we, we all do we are very motivated people but uh, do you have any more practical tips from your experience what to do, what not to do, what we should look out for in the process? First of all, try to be tolerant to slightly different ideas. You probably include minarchists and anarcho-capitalists as well. You would probably include some people who are Christians. You would probably include some people who admire uh, Ayn Rand and objectivism. And I think that if you have the basic shared idea of uh, the minimal state, you should be able to work together. Uh, so often when I speak, I as a minarchist speak to an anarcho-capitalist, I, I tell them, uh, well, we can be in one party, we can go together. Uh, and as in the future we will have the state that redistributes just three percent of the gross domestic product we can split our ways <laughs> exactly and then in this future you can establish your own anarcho-capitalist party and you can demand abolishing the state uh, altogether so just being inclusive towards also anarcho-capitalists. Yeah, basically that's what we, what the German libertarians co consider that it makes sense to, though most are not politically active and still refuse, you know, libertarian And try to politics. try to be nice to people. I think I what I uh, have found sometimes that people who are strongly convinced of their ideas like you are or I am you believe that your ideas are uh, s superior to the ideas of others who want to take money to other from other people and give it to the other people uh, try to be nice to people when explaining these ideas don't uh, try not to be arrogant uh, because we can gain nothing by being considered by other people as arrogant people. Okay, thank you very much. I see. Okay, I have also one more question. Um, what is uh, your opinion about uh, refugees? A lot of refugees are coming to... Refugees. Refugees are coming to, uh, Germany, uh, to, to Germany and other countries. What should we do with these people? Well, uh, in the Czech Republic there are many 
immigrants, mostly from Ukraine, Slovakia, and also Vietnam. And I think that uh, there are no problems with these people. They have jobs, they don't just claim uh, social benefits. I think that sometimes migration is motivated by social benefits and then it's not natural. So if some countries see, if, if some countries observe difficulties with migrants, I think that they should first um, look at their social policies and they should cut social benefits in the first place. So good, good luck, good okay. job. Thank All you. the best to you. Thank you very much for taking the time. And good luck with your party. Yeah, thank you very much. Hope to see you here maybe someday. <laughs>